everyone. Welcome to today's session of RESA Live. My name is Ashley Adams and I am a technical marketing engineer here at RESA. Today I'm going to show you how to integrate RESA section with RESA 3D um, and we're going to create some custom shapes in both RESA section and RESA 3D. So here I have RESA section open and you can see here to the left I've got a whole AISC database of shapes here available to me. I've got wide flange members, tubes, pipes, channels, all of those shapes are available. We also have some basic steel shapes as well as some basic concrete shapes. Um, you can also see a summary of all of the sections in our file that we'll create here on that left hand side. So the example that I'm going to show us here in Risa's section, it's going to be an example of an existing wide flange that is a part of a moment frame, and it's going to need to be reinforced due to some modifications and additional loading that's going to be applied to it. And so a, a typical scenario like this would occur where there's some modifications to an existing structure. And so in this instance, we're going to need to come into the AISC database and pick out the shape of the existing structure. And so that'll be a 16 by 31 is what I'm going to start with here. And so now you'll see that shape populate in our plan view here. And you can see all of the shape properties calculated here to the right. So now what I want to do to reinforce this section is I'm going to add a WT shape to the bottom of this member. I want to increase its moment capacity. So to do that, I'm going to come down here to our WT option. And I'm going to scroll down to, we'll go with a WT7 or let's say a four by seven and a half, I think is what probably sounds good. Um, that way we can meet those depth restraints that we have for this existing structure. So you can see it brought this WT in here and it just overlapped it on top of my wide flange. There's a couple of options we can do here to get this aligned. We want to move it to the bottom. So one way we could do this is when you click and highlight a member or a section within the profile, you can actually see some of these icons become available to you. And so what we're going to use here is this parallel align tool. And so I'm going to select this tool. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose first the line that I want to be aligned and then second will be the line that I want to be aligned with. So you can see that that shape snaps down to the bottom of my wide flange there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and undo that because there's a couple different ways we can achieve that same concept. So what I'm going to actually do now is if I highlight just by right clicking and dragging over both shapes. When I highlight both of them, I have a lot more of these tools available to me. I can choose to align them centered if they were misaligned, um, and I can choose to align them all on the right edge of them. So all of these options become available to us, but right here, I'm actually going to use the stack shapes vertically option. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. So that's an alternative way to achieve what, what we were looking for. Now, what I actually want to do, this shape here, I think we're going to rotate it around and we're basically going to just extend um, the depth of this, this wide flange. So if I use this rotate right feature, we'll rotate the, our shape around and it will actually need to, to align those shapes again now that we've rotated it. So I can just highlight and stack those shapes vertically. So now I've got my wide flange and this looks pretty good here. We'll essentially maybe come in and do a full CJP weld at the bottom here. So we in, in essence just created a brand new, deeper, uh, stronger wide flange member. So the important concept here that, need, that we need to consider, because um, we're going to want to bring this shape into Risa 3D and we're going to want to obtain a code check analysis. So the really important thing that we want to do here is acknowledge the material type and the shape type. So to obtain that code check analysis in Risa 3D, we're going to want to change this from the general material to the hot rolled steel material. And then we have our shape type option. So this is going to depend on what portion of the code that the um, analysis is going to be performed on and where these section properties are going to be calculated based on. And so this is a wide flange. It's most representative of a wide flange. So I'm going to want to stick with the wide flange code section and properties. And so then let's go ahead and name this section. We can name it reinforced W16. 
And so you can see all of these section properties have been calculated for the member here. We have the moment of inertia, we have the plastic section modulus, as well as elastic section modulus. And you'll notice this thick, dark line. So this thick, dark line here essentially means that kind of all of the values below this dark line should be um, evaluated by the engineer and be reviewed by the engineer. You do have the option, if you maybe perhaps disagree with one of these values, you do have the option to uncheck this box here, and that allows you to enter in a value other than what the program calculated itself. But I'm going to actually go ahead and we'll leave that as its default. And we'll just leave that checkbox checked there. And you'll notice this torsional J. So right now there's no calculation for our torsional J constant. So that's something we have to calculate manually. So if I come up here and I choose the to calculate J based on this um, compute torsional J constant icon, I'll go ahead and select that. And you can see that the, the torsional J constant was calculated for each shape individually. And it essentially summed the J for both of those shapes, and that's the J it's reporting for me. That's not necessarily what I want, because I'm gonna actually weld these two shapes together and they're gonna behave more like one. And so to, to care for that, what I can do is I can just select both of these elements and I can choose the merge shapes option. So once I merge those shapes, you'll see that that line distinguishing the two shapes apart from each other has disappeared, and now these shapes become one. When I come up here and choose to calculate J again, it's going to give me the torsional J constant for one shape. And now I have 0.479, which is more conservative than the last calculation and the one that I would want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. So I've reviewed all of my properties. And this shape looks good to me, and I'm about ready to import this into Reset 3D. So something important to note is the location of where your Reset section file is saved. So we want to make sure that our Reset know where we save our Reset section file because that's where Reset 3D is going to pull that information from. So I'm going to go ahead and save this section file. And so you'll notice that I've got my section file um, saved here under the users, my documents folder, Reese's section files. I always like to, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this. Um, so that way, whenever I go into Reese's 3D, I'm gonna verify that file location. And if I need to, I can change it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and save this section. We'll call this Reese Alive. And that's my, set, my file, my Reese's section file name. And so something I like to point out is that here is my Reese's section file, and then we have our sections in current file. A really nice way to organize, maybe you have an existing project where there's a lot of members that need to be reinforced, and you've got a lot of instances like this one exactly. You might need to create additional sections here in your file. So a good thing that I rec like to recommend is maybe you name your Reese's section file based on the job number that you're working on. And you can always include those various specific Reese's sections uh, within that file. And you can do that just by right clicking on the existing shape and you can either rename this one or you can add a new section. And so you can add multiple sections here within this one file. And that's a really nice way to keep all of those sections organized based on um, a per job basis. So now that I have this saved, I'm gonna go ahead and actually pop into Risa 3D. And the reason I didn't have Risa 3D already opened is because if I did, I would have had to close out of it because Risa needs to kind of reboot and reread the database. So by creating a shape within Risa's section, I was writing to the database. And recent 3D essentially needs to reboot to be able to, to re-download the database. So anytime you're working in Risa's section and you open up Risa 3D and you don't see your section, um, oftentimes you might need to just close out of the program and reopen. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new model. The model I'm going to create is just going to be a basic moment frame. I'm not going to get too fancy here. I'm going to create uh, the beam for our moment frame will be that shape that we just created in Risa 3D. And then I'm going to show us how to create a custom shape in Risa 3D. And those will be our columns for our moment frame. So now that I'm here in Risa 3D, the first thing that I actually want to do is I want to come to my application settings. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to verify that I'm going to be able to find my Risa section file. 
And so I can do that by coming over here to my file locations. And under recess section files, here is the file path where it's looking for my recess section files. And that's exactly where I saved my recess section file. So we're good to go. So we can go ahead and select OK. And I should be able to start drawing my members now. So I'll come here and I'll draw my members. And I can just start pulling them from the shape database. So I can select these three little dots here, just as I would any regular shape from the database. And the big component here is that I want to change my database from AISC to Rhesus section. So you'll scroll down and you'll see a database called Rhesus section. And then you can see all of the different project files that I've created here. And we can see the RESA Live, the reinforced W16 right here. And so we see the increased depth with that width. And we can even select to view the properties of this shape here. So these are all the properties that calculate were calculated in RESA section. We see that 0.479 torsional J constant. So that all looks good. It looks like everything was brought in correctly. And that's a good way to verify our values. So I'll go ahead and choose OK. And now we can go ahead and draw our shape. So I'm just going to start with a simple basic moment frame. Maybe we'll say 15 feet tall, and it will have it span about 20 feet. And so here's our simple beam. And I'm going to go ahead and just snap us into a rendered view here just to show you. Right now, it, just, it views as just a regular wide flange. And that's based on the designation that we called it a wide flange. So despite the fact that we can't necessarily see that additional WT there on the bottom, we know that all of those section properties still are based on that increased depth section. So that's something good to, good to know. So I'll go ahead and switch back into my wireframe mode. And now what I'm going to show us how to do is create a custom shape here in Reset 3D. So you can do a combination of both. Sometimes you might be able to create all of the sections in Risa section. Sometimes you might be able to create all of the sections in Risa 3D. It really depends on the particular shape and, and which you find more applicable. So to add another section, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to act like I'm going to start drawing a shape again. This time it's going to be a column, however, and it'll be hot rolled steel and the shape type we're going to want to change. And we'll keep just going in like it's a normal, we're picking a normal shape. I'm going to go ahead and switch into our AISC database. And I'm going to go to the tube. So say, for example, in this example, the existing columns um, are built up out of plates. So it's not a direct HSS tube. At the time, say for, for whatever reason, they um, didn't have the HSS available, so they decided to create a custom shape out of tubes. So I can't choose from the standard database. So what I can do is I can just choose to add a shape. So here I can choose to add my shape and I'll, I'll just say custom or let's say built up plates. And I can give it a, spe a, special, a special depth and a width. And let's go ahead and just say a thickness of 0.375. And based on those basic properties here, I can choose to calculate our section properties. So I'll just choose that. And you can see all of those values have now been calculated. And I can choose OK. Now this dialog here is asking me that it's telling me that I created a brand new shape and it's asking if I want to save this shape to the database file indefinitely. Do I want it to be saved on my computer to be accessible by all models? Um, since this is a very particular shape and I suspect I'm really only going to need this shape available to me for this specific project, I usually choose no. However, sometimes there's instances where you might have a shape that you use consistently and you might want it available in all of your projects. And in that instance, you would want to choose yes. I'm going to go ahead and choose no here. And so you can see at the bottom of my HSSs, as in blue, it says built up plates. So I can view those properties here, and I have the ability to print these as well if I want to include them in my report. And I actually also have the option to edit these properties. So I can come in here and I can edit them. So if I wanted to, I could come in and I could round out some of these values and just go ahead and say, OK. And I, I don't, if, if I choose to recalculate this, it's going to reset these values. But if I choose to just leave them as is, I can go ahead and press OK. We'll select no again. And when I view those, you'll see that those changes that I made were saved there. So I can choose OK. So now we have our built up plate section that I'm going to use. 
I should go ahead and note that you can do this for all shapes. You can do it for a wide flange, you can do it for a pipe, for a channel, for a WT. All you have to do is just select the, the shape that you want to base your new shape off of, and then you can choose add, and you can add your shape properties in there. And so um, you can do this for all of the databases. It's not just available for tube, um, all, even though tube might seem like one of the more simpler options here. We'll go ahead and choose our built up plates and select OK. And so one other thing I want to change here is the material type. So I'm going to change this to grade 36 steel because chances are when this structure was built, it was probably 36 uh, KSI steel. And so I'm going to go ahead and just draw my columns here. And next thing we need to do to complete our frame is to add some boundary conditions. So I'm going to just choose fixed boundary conditions and I'm going to apply those by just clicking and dragging a box around my boundary conditions. And now we can go ahead and what we want to do to get an actual analysis for this moment frame is probably we want to apply a lateral load to it. So I'm just going to keep it simple and apply a basic nodal load here. I'm going to apply a, a load in the direction of our global X and we'll keep it as our basic load case one. So let's go ahead and create that. We'll give it the load category of lateral force. And category, we'll leave that set to none um, just because we're keeping it simple here. And then I'm going to apply 10 kips in that positive x direction. So I'm going to apply that here to my node. And we can see that displayed here on our basic load case. And then I'll quickly create just a, a single load combination here so that we can view the analysis based on our new custom shapes. So we'll choose to turn P delta on. And then since I just have one basic load case, we'll just keep it simple. Now that I have my combination created, I can choose to just go ahead and solve that load combination. And we'll get, a, get an analysis for those custom shapes here. So what we can do, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off our drawing grid here so we can see a little bit better is we can actually come over and we can view the results for our moment frame. So we can choose to view, maybe we wanna view our moment diagrams for our frame. So that looks pretty accurate there. We can view the deflected shape for our frame as well. And maybe we actually wanna view the detail report for our frame. So I can come in here and I can choose to view the detail report for my beam element. You'll see that the shape type is my reinforced beam that I made custom and it's a hot rolled steel and so as we scroll down, you'll see the code check analysis. And because we called it a wide flange, hot rolled steel within Reese's section, this is why we're able to obtain the full code check analysis. Had we not done that, had we maybe left it as a general arbitrary um, shape, we would not have been able to obtain this code check analysis. So there it is for our wide flange. You can also view it here for our HSS member that we created, our built up plate section. It's our column, you can see it's bending. And you have the same code check analysis here available for you. So that is, so that is the summation of what you can do to create custom shapes in Risa's section as well as Risa 3D. And as I said, sometimes there's good applications for one over the other, um, but both give you the versatility to really create shapes accurately in the way that you need. So thank you for attending today's Risa session, uh, session, uh, Risa's session of Risa Live. Um, please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you wanna be notified for any future updates to our channel, as well as uh, future Risa Live sessions. Thank you for joining.